You've just started watching Tenderfoot Snowboarding. Tenderfoot is my attempt to create a video project based around the community of snowboarding rather than the individual tricks. Why? Because after two decades on a board, I realized the most important lessons and memories I have came from the people around me and not my personal battles. We'll travel and meet a handful of characters to try and get their insight on what snowboarding means to them. Our first journey starts in the Pacific Northwest with Quinn Baumberger, Harrison Gordon, and Jason Robinson. Simply put, Jason is someone that cannot be imitated. He's gained wisdom from his experiences train hopping, mule packing, heli boarding, and doing all the other crazy shit he does. We asked Jason what his relationship with snowboarding is all about. I think it is, like you said, it is a way for me to sort of just run away from everything else, you know, Every, like, because it's real simple. You just snowboard, you get excited, you're pretty much high, and then the day is over, you're tired, you pretty much eat dinner, go to sleep. Like, yeah, there's probably, I could probably spend like a week or so of like doing emails and going to the bank and doing errands and stuff, but um, you can just go shred every day instead. But do you think that's a healthy relationship with snowboarding that you have? No, no, it's no, not snow. It's no, not. it's not healthy. But I mean, if it wasn't snowboarding, it could be something else. Yeah. Anyway, it's not like snowboarding's the blame. No. It's just it's all. like it's the excuse. I'm not really pl thinking of the future on how I'm gonna like my exit move from snowboarding. I'm just putting all I can at the moment into it. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna drop real soon My mind's a hurt and I'm over the moon Pulse is sagging, I'm losing the pace It's the way you feel, not now the way you taste Next up, I'd like to introduce Quinn Baumberger. Quinn's a Bellingham resident who has bike toured across most of the world, learning from others as he went. Quinn's always smiling and has a thirst for adventure like no one else I know. I had the chance to ask Quinn what his intentions with snowboarding are. My intentions, I guess, in the beginning were to travel and snowboard, go different places and see the world, you know, and like you see how other people live and and you see what's important to people and what I see that was consistent was friends and family and having those people close and, and just going through life's, life's journey, I guess, with everybody.
At this point, like, I just kind of think that's how it is, you know? Like, snowboarding is so fun that we'll ignore every other part of life just to be there all the time. Or, or you know, whenever we can. We traveled down to California to ride the Eastern Sierra Mountains and meet up with our friend Scott Smith. Scott breathes passion, not for one thing in particular, but for everything he does. His current endeavors include artistic craftsmanship and downright crazy snowmobiling. I had the chance to ask Scott what motivates him. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of chasing your capabilities and to challenge yourself and sometimes to scare yourself I think is really important to overcome that and to admit that you have fear and to react after you've come to terms with that and reconciled your capabilities and what the feature or obstacle in your life is. Um, what's there to overcome and then at that point you decide whether or not to move forward or to to back off and approach another route I think all those aspects can be applied to any part of your life and bringing that to the mountain or into the shop is really important <laughs> Time to slow things down and trade the snowmobiles for split boards. We met up with Eastern Sierra local Lonnie Kalk. Lonnie has spent his life in these mountains and they've become a part of who he is. I was lucky enough to have Lonnie take me into his backyard and share some of his wisdom with me. I'd say opening your intuition when you go to the mountain is no different than turning on your beacon. Like the second you turn on that beacon, yeah, you got that. That thing's there for you. It, it, it can save your life but also so can your intuition. Like when you know when it's right and when it's wrong, like if you just don't feel it and the mountain just seems like it's just saying no, it's saying no and just listen. And there's another day, you know, will happen, you know? So I think that that's what's pretty cool is just going out there and opening your intuition and just feeling 
feeling your vibe and feeling the mountain's vibe and getting in sync with it and then fucking send it. Dropping. I had a great time hanging with Lonnie in the mountains. The snow kept falling, so we called up some good friends and made the most of it. Bring a friend jump, dude. Jump oh, yeah. a friend jump. Oh, oh, dude. Living up to his name. No matter how many mountains we've traveled to or lines we've rode, we all found our love for snowboarding, lapping the ski resort from open to close. It gave us the ability to express ourselves, to be creative and to find our own style. Style is what Fair Mountain is all about. Everyone doing the same thing, but with such different perspective and style that it becomes something different. We traveled down a Bear Mountain to try and tap into that energy that first made us fall in love with snowboarding. one kind of like nose method big fan of that like yeah that's it's hard because like 
You know, especially when you're stuck somewhere, you kind of get a rut and you get like bored and you're like, fuck, I'm just gonna go up there and do the same board slides a thousand more times. But I feel like it almost has like a skate park vibe where like every time you go to the skate park, it's the same where you're like, all right, well, I gotta learn something new to yeah. like make skateboarding fun every yeah. day. Well, that's what like, I even try and tell like everyone, like, cause there's a lot of times where we do mob really fast, like what we just did. And but that's when you like, you do like your comfortable tricks. And then I was like, I always tell them like, all right, this lap we're gonna fucking slow the fuck down and try something that you're scared to try. Yeah, and then if once everybody tries something, it's like, you know, yeah. group okay, effect. The more we rode Bear, the more one thing became apparent. It's all about the homies. Everyone is stoked to be doing what they're doing and stoked to be sharing it with each other. Push it in, here shop. Take a pen, talk about. Fit the road, play it out. Oh, down the smoking lane without love. Call a friend, fuck it up. Honesty is still the route. We respect only doubt. Cause we're falling either way, we down and out. The snow in California was melting away and quickly finding its way back into the ocean. I made a call to Chile and luckily Manuel Diaz picked up on the other side. And that's how our next adventure began to shape up. Our final chapter takes place in Chile, where we aim to find out what snowboarding means to people on the other side of the world. Welcome to Tenderfoot Snowboarding Part 4. Chile is a unique balance of towering volcanoes and winding coastline. This trip we wanted to explore Chile and meet a few of the locals as we went. Our plan was simple, to meet up with two Chilean friends, Christian Warhan and Manuel Diaz, who are going to show us their version of Chile. Christian has made his life in the snow. He was one of the first pro snowboarders in Chile and now guides snowmobiling in the Andes. I first met Christian six years ago and since then he's always inspired me. I asked Christian why he chose the path he did. Yeah, man, I think we all love it for a reason, and my reason is strong. I feel like the, the winter in the mountains have given me everything I, I wanted. Like, um, it's, it's led me in the path that it's getting me challenged and scared of what's going to happen next and overcome uh, hardship and just look, keep looking, like keep standing against it and going forward, you know? Like, we're in it for the long run. It's been fun all the way. We've learned a lot, and, and like I said, it's challenging, and you I like a challenge. She's just what she pleases. Yeah! She's happy on her own. She picks up all the pieces, she's going home. Baby, I'm home, I'm home, I'm home. Yeah, she's going home. Baby, I'm home, I'm home, I'm home. 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 
Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Woo! Manuel's riding speaks for itself. He's one of the best snowboarders in the world. But what I like most about Manuel is his ability to make every situation fun, to bring a good energy everywhere he goes and to never stop smiling. I think snowboarding is a lot about that. Uh, seeing your friends, uh, making everybody comfortable and enjoying the terrain and taking the most of it. And I like to be watched, you know, by my friends. I think that's the session all about, you know, like seeing your friend and and climb if he lands that sick trick and give him a hug, I don't know, you know, and I feel the same way. If, if you stomp a trick, you will get a hug, you will get something, you know, and it's it's all about the love of of, of, of getting the most of, the, of each situation on a sick terrain and a sick jump and with your friends, you know, it's, uh, it's just the same love that I start with when I found snowboarding and I I give everything to snowboarding because it, it give me all Our friends certainly showed us the best of Chile. We had a few days left in the trip, so we made sure to make the most of it. No te 
quedes callada No levantes la voz Ni me pidas perdón Aunque casi te confieso Que también he sido un perro compañero Un perro ideal que aprendió mal Y a volver al hogar Para poder comer Our winter was finally coming to an end. We had traveled and met with a lot of friends to try and understand what snowboarding was all about. After this winter, I can tell you that for me, it's about the people and the connections I've made. Our love for snowboarding brings us together. It might sound cliche, but I found my home wasn't a house at all. It was this community I've met through snowboarding. We might not be saving the world, but hopefully we can inspire others to share something they love and to make the most out of every day together. Thank you all for being a part of Tenderfoot Snowboarding. I hope you enjoyed the journey with us. I'd like to give a huge thanks to everyone who helped us out along the way. 